This is the second part of our discussion on sequences of complex numbers. So far, we have defined what is a sequence of complex numbers. So precisely speaking, a sequence of complex numbers is a function from set of natural numbers to complex numbers. Uh, of course, when we take uh, n is equal to 1, then the output is going to be the first term of the sequence. And when we take n is equal to 2, the output is going to be the second term and up to so on. So we have a kind of infinite uh, arrangement of complex numbers. Now, of course, uh, a natural question would be what is the end term or what is the pattern, how this pattern is approaching to some, uh, uh, let's say, complex numbers or uh, is it not approaching to anything? Okay, so is it approaching to a fixed complex number? So this pattern, if we follow this pattern of complex numbers, or we are approaching to a city named infinity. So this is uh, the main point of uh, this part of the discussion on sequences. Now, let's discuss this very simple example where we are taking this uh, sequence given by 1 over n. And uh, let's see what is the pattern of uh, the terms of this sequence. Of course, it's a, a sequence of real numbers and it's a very simple example, but we will move on and we will generalize the pattern to sequence of complex numbers. Okay, now uh, the first term uh, is obtained when we take n is equal to 1. Okay, so this is the first term when we take n is equal to 1 and uh, it is 1. And when we take n is equal to 2, it's going to give me the second term and in this case it is going to be 1 by 2. So this is the second term and uh, if we take n is equal to 3 then it is going to give me the third term which is 1 over 3 and the fourth term 1 by 4, the fifth term 1 by 5, sixth term and up to so on. Now we can see that there is some sort of pattern here. So we started our journey from the number 1 and we are moving towards the origin. And a good guess is that these terms are going to approach to infinity. Well, I'm using the word approach here because they cannot be zero because uh, division by zero is not allowed. Okay, so the terms are approaching to zero. Okay, so we can we can say that uh, a limit of a sequence, uh, let's say z n or x n, is p if the terms of the sequence are very very close to that number p when uh, we take n to be very very large. Now, how close? So this is uh, the main point of the discussion. Okay, so if we can understand this point, then we'll be able to understand what is limit of a sequence. Okay, so the question is uh, the limit of sequence x n is p. So when it is p. Okay, so if the terms of the sequence are very very close to p how much close so in fact as close as we want or arbitrarily close okay so that's uh, one good intuitive way of uh, considering the limit but when we say as close we as we want then we need to define it very precisely mathematically okay so uh, let's go back to the same example again it's 1 over n now this is 0 this is 1 the first term this is the second term up to so on. Now, our guess was uh, the limit of the sequence 1 over n is 0. Okay, So, let's see if the terms of the sequence are as close as we want to the origin. So, what do we want? So, let's assume we want that the terms of the sequence are closer than let's say 0 0.5. Okay, So, the distance between 0 and the term of the sequence is less than 0 0.5. So, what are the numbers which are uh, less than uh, which are at a distance of less than 0 0.5 from the origin. So it is going to be minus 0 0.5 and it is going to be plus 0 0.5. So in this blue interval, uh, there are numbers which are closer than 0 0.5 to the origin. Okay. So now um, the terms of the sequence. So let's go back to the terms of the sequence. So this is the second term and then we move on to the third term and then we have fourth term up to so on. And now we can easily see that after this 1 by 2, the terms of the sequence are closer than 0.5. Now, this 0.5 was a very arbitrary choice. Now, let's choose another number. Let's say 0 0.01 okay? or let's say 0 0.1. So, it's going to be something like this. Now, uh, the question is, uh, so what are the endpoints? It's minus 0 
1 to plus 0.1 now the question is are the terms of the sequence closer than uh, this distance 0.1 which we have chosen another number that we want okay so and the answer is of course yes if we take the terms to be uh, let's say 1 over uh, I don't know 100 or 1 over 100 by 2 so all of the terms after let's say n is equal to 11 are going to be inside this thing okay so uh, let's see why this is true so if we take 1 over 10 then it is going to be 0 0.1 and after this number so this is uh, this is this point 1 over 10 and after this point 1 over 11 is going to be inside this interval and up to so on so all of these terms are going to be inside this interval so it happens that uh, we chose this point one very arbitrarily and terms of the sequence are inside this interval now now let's choose another very arbitrary distance let's call it epsilon okay now uh, of course the endpoints are going to be epsilon and minus epsilon now the question is can we find okay so can we find uh, a number n such that the terms of the sequence are closer than epsilon okay so this is the question and of course um, this example of a sequence is very simple and we can easily uh, find that epsilon okay uh, sorry that n in in this case we can easily find that n such that the terms of the sequence after that n are closer than epsilon okay so how do we find that so what do we want so we want that 1 over n uh, the distance between 1 over n and 0 which is 1 over n minus 0 is less than epsilon okay so in other words uh, what we want is so this is 1 over n is less than epsilon and this is possible if and only if this 1 over epsilon is less than n so if we choose this n which is bigger than 1 over epsilon then all of the terms are going to be inside this interval after this value of n which is bigger than 1 over epsilon so we can say that there is a number after that number all of the terms are going to be inside this uh, interval this yellow interval so we can say that so since this epsilon was very arbitrary so we can say that uh, the terms of the sequence are as close as we want to this number zero okay so now uh, let's write it down uh, very precisely mathematically so for every epsilon if we can choose this capital N and uh, there is a subscript epsilon because this capital N depends on the epsilon as such that the distance between X n and P so this mod is calculating the distance between X n and P and if this distance is less than epsilon after this capital N then we say that uh, the limit of the sequence is P and since uh, this epsilon uh, is arbitrary so we can say that uh, the terms of the sequence are as close as we want to this number p okay so that's how we define the limit of a sequence for uh, the real number case now let's go um, to the complex number case so over here we can see red dots so these are terms of the sequence and uh, we can guess that the terms of the sequence are kind of converging to this number uh, which is basically this number okay so how do we uh, check in this case and uh, basically the idea is going to be the same so if the terms of the sequence are as close as we want to this number then we say that this is the limit of the sequence okay so now um, in complex plane if we want to check that two numbers are closer to each other or not then we use uh, the distance between them or uh, the mod of uh, the difference between them okay or in other words we instead of taking intervals over here we have these disks okay so disks center at uh, this point okay so over here if we want to check that the numbers are closer than then uh, than this epsilon then basically we are checking that uh, after some capital n all of the terms are inside this uh, uh, disk or not okay so uh, precisely uh, it is just a very simple generalization of uh, 
the, the definition for real number case so in this case we say that uh, some number is limit of a sequence of complex number if for every epsilon so now this is epsilon for every epsilon there exists some capital n such that all of the terms are inside this disk uh, when we say inside this disk it means all of the terms are closer than epsilon okay so over here the same uh, idea as close as we want and epsilon is arbitrary okay so if this happens then we say that uh, this is the limit of uh, sequence of complex numbers now as I've told you earlier that uh, this definition is a very straightforward generalization of uh, the convergence for real numbers okay of course what's the difference now the terms of the sequence are complex numbers and the limit uh, this zeta is also a complex number and the rest of the things are the same that for every epsilon so this epsilon is arbitrary so that's the the distance that we want okay so the terms of the sequence are closer uh, to zeta than this distance whenever the number n is greater than this capital n so after this capital n all of the terms are closer than epsilon to this number zeta and if this happens then we say that the limit of this sequence of complex numbers is zeta now the point is uh, it's a kind of complicated task to apply this definition okay because you have to check for each and every epsilon if there exists some capital n and uh, if we choose this that epsilon to be arbitrary then it's a kind of abstract calculation okay now uh, one solution of uh, this problem is if we can find the relation between the convergence of sequence of complex numbers and the convergence of sequence of real numbers okay because we kind of uh, have some habit of working with the sequence of real numbers and we know some results that will help us in understanding uh, the convergence of sequence of complex numbers now in this direction one of our main results is this one if we have a sequence of complex numbers zn which is equal to xn plus iota yn and uh, of course this xn and yn are uh, real sequences okay so xn x1 x2 x3 up to xn up to so on so this forms a real sequence and similarly y1 y2 y3 yn up to so on forms a uh, another real sequence and if we uh, join these uh, real sequences in the following way xn plus iota yn then this is a complex sequence okay and if this zeta is the limit of this sequence of uh, complex numbers then uh, this is logically equivalent to the following scenario that the limit of the sequence a xn is u which is the real part of this limit and the limit of the sequence yn is v which is the imaginary part of the limit of this sequence zn okay now let's apply this uh, principle over here now we want to check that whether this sequence of complex number is convergent or divergent and we can easily see that uh, this sequence has two parts the real part and the imaginary part and of course over here xn plus out of yn uh, and this is the sequence zn and xn is basically equal to the real part which is 2 minus 1 over n and yn is basically equal to 5 plus 1 over n okay and these are two separate uh, real sequences now if you want to check that what is the limit of this sequence zn then we want to calculate the limits of these two real sequences separately okay so 2 minus 1 over n so this is going to be equal to so the limit n approaches to infinity 1 over n we have seen it it is 0 so it is equal to 2 and similarly when we check the limit n approaches to infinity of this yn which is basically 5 plus 1 over n and we have also seen that the limit of this sequence 1 over n is 0 so that's why this is equal to 5 so we can say that the limit of the sequence n approaches to infinity of zn is basically 2 plus iota 5 so that's how we used um, this very uh, uh, simple results of uh, real sequences and their limits to check the limit of this complex sequence now the proof uh, of this sequence is kind of straightforward now given is uh, the limit of the this complex sequence is this zeta and uh, if we and we want to prove that okay so this is the first part of our proof limit zn is equal to u plus iota v and what do we want to show so we want to show that uh, limit of n approaches to infinity xn is equal to u and uh, of course limit n approaches to infinity of yn 
is V. So that's what we want to show. Okay, so uh, the given part implies that. Okay, so given. So let's elaborate this given part. So given is for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists some capital N depending on epsilon, such that the distance between Z n and this zeta. Okay, so zeta is less than epsilon whenever the terms of the sequence are taken after this capital N epsilon. So this is given part we are allowed to use this fact. Now what do we want to show? So we want to show that for epsilon greater than 0 okay so this is of course another arbitrary epsilon uh, there exist some capital N epsilon uh, such that the distance between x and and x is less than epsilon uh, whenever this n is greater than or equal to epsilon and similarly for similarly for y n so that's what we want to show now uh, let's start from uh, this expression okay so because that's what we want to show now uh, starting from this expression x n minus x now in fact this is the real part of uh, z n minus this zeta okay and uh, we have seen that uh, the mag uh, the modulus of this thing is uh, less than or equal to uh, the modulus of z n minus zeta okay and uh, this thing is less than epsilon whenever this n is greater than or equal to capital n okay and so uh, we have proved that x n minus x is less than epsilon whenever n is greater than or equal to capital n epsilon over here of course we are using that z n converges to zeta and similarly we can prove that similarly for y n okay and uh, uh, the converse part for the converse part we have to assume that uh, this x n okay so now assume that uh, x n converges to u in other words x n minus u is less than epsilon uh, whenever n is greater than or equal to let's say n epsilon and similarly y n minus uh, v is less than epsilon whenever n is greater than or equal to some other number m epsilon now what do we want to show we want to show that the distance between z n and this zeta is less than epsilon now this is going to be equal to x n plus out of y n plus u plus out of v and uh, of course this is not plus this is minus and this is going to be equal to x n minus u plus iota y n minus v now applying this triangle inequality uh, we get x n minus u plus iota y n minus v now uh, this mod is multiplicative it preserves multiplication so that's why i have separated this iota with y n minus v the mod of iota is one so that's why this is less than now over here x n minus u is less than epsilon now if i change this to be epsilon by 2 and epsilon by 2 so that i get the answer over here to be epsilon so this becomes epsilon by 2 epsilon by 2 which is equal to epsilon and of course this happens whenever n is greater than or equal to n epsilon and epsilon n epsilon so we can say that the maximum of n epsilon and m epsilon okay so that's what it happens now in this part we have defined what is limit of a sequence and after defining it we found a relation between the limit of a complex sequence and limit of a real sequence and this is going to help us in finding the limits of complex sequences